It's me! Hey, Gerald 508 It is Friday, June 26th, and uh, I am blurred out. Okay, there we go. Um, in the morning, crazy, crazy pace, isn't it? We're almost done. So, um, anyways. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, thank uh, Nicole and Esther for uh, just an amazingly good job, again, on um, uh, the, uh, the topic of Mental health and aging, okay, and um, it, it really does relate to the next topic here that we're going to do with Andrea and Shelley, and that's polypharmacy. Uh, one of the first screens you have to do when uh, dealing with mental health issues, whether it's cognitive, um, socio-emotional, clinical depression, you got to look and see what drugs everybody's on, okay, because over, over prescription of one class of drug, or as we learned from uh, Andrea and Shelley's PowerPoint and, and the, the, the many um, materials provided in the lecture, uh, you can have drug interactions and it can really impact the way your brain works. It also can impact the way your heart works, kidneys work, everything. And it's just this downward spiral, this snowballing effect. Um, uh, a big part of the section is, ag again, looking at gastrointestinal, you know, so the drugs impact gastrointestinal absorption, and then we get into the whole nutritional aspect of aging that we've discussed. So it, you do see this kind of mind-body connection, how all the systems are interactive, and so you really need to be uh, prudent about uh, overlooking everything um, in terms of uh, uh, your elderly patient. And um, when we talk being prudent, you know, um, Again, it's just monitoring, you know, and, and you, as a case manager, as a physician, you know, you, you um, uh, look into uh, prevention, uh, regular medication review, um, uh, what kind of non-pharmacological approaches uh, can be used instead of using pharmacy. So we have all talked about diet and exercise. Really try and simplify um, the approach for the patient, as you know. Uh, um, you know, pill minders, um, uh, just, you know, something that will set up an organization plan for your, your client, and, and just lots and lots of communication. You have to stay on top. You cannot assume that the, your patient is being compliant, and that's where you run into to trouble, as you know. Okay. Um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, the topics of, of polypharmacy, this video is amazing, so please watch the video that I, that I put in there. It shows you an actual physician and, and, and the kind of interviews that have to be done. The person um, is, comes in and is expressing concern. They, um, they, they, she had took a fall, okay, um, um, and why did she take a fall? Okay, well probably because of the type of drugs that she's taking, okay. You can have these adverse reactions, like I said, to individual drugs. There can be a complete lack of compliance if you don't monitor things. Um, you have to remember also that your kidneys and your livers, um, the way the drugs are laid out in terms of uh, uh, pres prescription uh, descriptions and identifiers by drug companies, it's all laid out for the 22-year-old male, okay? And um, this does not even come close to matching the physiology that happens uh, with a 70-year-old's uh, liver and kidney, okay? so. So drugs tend to stay around longer. If they're uh, f uh, drugs that are uh, lipid soluble, they, um, as we all know, as we get older, we have uh, uh, tend to have more fat on our bodies, and these drugs love to uh, basically bur burrow their way into your uh, fats and hide in there. And so then they just sit there in time release. So you have to be really, really careful when prescribing for an older uh, patient. Um, of course, the most common drugs that everybody's going to be in are cardiovascular drugs, and Ed, our, our own Ed Schneider did this huge study um, because 90-year-old uh, people, patients in uh, assisted living facilities were still on the same exact regime of um, antihypertensive medication that they were prescribed when they were 65, and of course, they didn't need that, you know, and, and um, what was happening is because they have low blood pressure, and we naturally have trouble regulating our blood pressure, for example, going from a sitting to a standing position as we get older, and what he found was um, when they pulled the antihypertensive medication off, that the, the, the incidence of falls just dramatically plummeted. So it was really, really, really important, okay? As we get older, we've all started to complain about this, okay? Um, 
it's just a general universal age-related fact that, that the number of hours that we sleep goes down, our sleep is more disrupted, it just creates a lot of anxiety, so we turn to our physicians and we get sleeping medications like you know, Xanax and Valium and Ambien. Problem is, okay, um, uh, again, they do have long-term effects, getting up in the morning, you can be groggy and put you at risk again as well. So, um, so uh, please look over everything that Andrea and Shelley have done. Keep powering through, okay, these discussions. Also, um, um, Afshin gave me an email yesterday and, and he was uh, very complimentary about uh, the feedback I give. So I do go in there and I, I look through every single discussion. As you know, I jump into the discussion and I also grade the discussions and I give you feedback. So, so please look there. It's my job and that's what I want to do. So, alrighty. So, um, on, on a more personal side, so we are off to the hematologist oncologist in San Diego. It's the, the best facility for anybody that has chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And uh, that's my wife. She has a, a lymphoma. And so we go down there every three months to monitor white blood cell count because it is cancerous. The white blood cells uh, tend to skyrocket and it's watching weight. And then when the white blood cells get to a certain level, um, the cancer ones they begin to push out all the red blood cells, the platelets, the normal white blood cells, and then they begin treatment. So we are not there yet, but we'll find out today. So everybody cross your fingers for us, okay? All right. Take care and have a good weekend.